Laws. So y'all give her a welcome. And uh, she's going to be talking about improving the relationships between fisheries managers and nonprofit leaders. Hello. 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 Hello.
hot topic right now. Uh, so the Marine Mammal Protection Act, it requires that you consider the effects to both marine mammals and the effects that mitigation is going to have on industry. Uh, and it gives authorization of take of individuals so long as there's not population level harm. So the question in front of uh, the National Marine Fishery Service Agency, therefore, is, you know, are these seismic exploration activities in the Atlantic going to cause population level harm? And analyses concluded that they would not, so long as proper mitigation is put in place. Uh, so they presented proposals for take authorization <coughs> in for seismic exploration, and they got 117,000 public comments. And almost all of these public <coughs> comments uh, were completely misinformed about the actual um, decision that was in front of the agency. And um, there, often those comments are you know, from people in the public that are directed by uninformed uh, organizations. So, I mean, that, that we need, you know, to have a dialogue between agencies and nonprofits so that we can be correctly informing the public. Um, and we, you know, the most important thing about this is that we want to use the public's passion in a constructive way. We don't want to get into this loop where the public is trying to be active in decision making and then they get to the point where they're, what they're doing is not effective at all. Um, and uh, so their actions result in no change, and then they basically give up. We don't want that to happen. Uh, so, uh, as as Jess mentioned, uh, nonprofits are nimble. Um, we can we can do a lot of things that managers cannot, um, <clears throat> and and we can be an arbiter between local governments and the public and all stakeholders. <coughs> and so, you know. We really want to have complete stakeholder engagement so that we can uh, practice best management on our watersheds. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things the St. Mary's River Keeper is doing where we're working with a lot of different stakeholders. Uh, one thing that we're doing is in a place called Horseton Creek in Camden County. Um, it's an area that's impaired for high levels of fecal coliform. And along with the Camden County governments, uh, University of Georgia, Georgia EP, uh, we got a 319 grant from the EPA to replace septic systems in this area of Camden County that's uh, in it, you know, not a particularly wealthy area. They have failing septic systems. The water quality is terrible. Um, we need to replace those septic systems, but they can't necessarily afford it. So we got a grant to replace those septic systems. Um, and the river keeper's role in that process is one, to do the water quality monitoring, but two, public engagement. I'm sure many of you know that uh, people in South Georgia aren't always completely trusting of government agencies. So when Camden County government says that they want to come into your backyard and look at your septic system, you know, that might not go over very well. Uh, so our job is basically to hold meetings with people in the community and convince them that this was a great thing. And we did. Um, you know, we went out and inspected their septic systems and we're in the process of replacing them. So these are some of our results. Um, these are winter and summer site geometric means. And uh, in between taking these two um, sets of data uh, was when the county came out and pumped all of the failing septic systems. So you can see that these, this, these two sets are pretty similar what you would expect in the summer for the um, coliform units for the coli to be exponentially higher because the water is warmer and the growth rates are higher. But just so simply the fact that these results are similar showing that our project is working to improve the water quality. And another project we've got going on is in Florida. Um, in Old Town Fernandina, there's a historical site that has gotten some issues and we're building a living shoreline. Uh, this is kind of the Microsoft Paint drawing of our uh, shoreline design. Uh, we're putting out crab traps covered in a cement slurry and oyster shells um, 
to build a oyster reef breakwater to mitigate wave action and erosion. And we're working with Florida Sea Grant, Georgia Sea Grant, Coastal Conservation Association, Florida Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, City of Bernardino, a lot of folks. And, and we, you know, a big part of why we want to do this is uh, public education. Um, Living shorelines are a very trendy thing right now, but it, you know, going forward in the future, they might be something that you know, individual homeowners might be interested in. And, um, so this is, we're going to implement this in the spring, um, and we're pretty excited about it. So <coughs> on that note, thanks to all of our partners. too long and not my colleagues. Um, Y'all are going to have a slightly shorter break than you would have had. Um, so please be back in the room um, at 3.15. And uh, my fellow river keepers, if during the break y'all would pull a chair and sit with me up here in this corner, we can move immediately into our panel when we get to the end of the next session. Um, so we'll send y'all, we'll see y'all in, in uh, 3.15.